I would say that now is probably the best time for, for anyone to be involved in this space on sustainability because there is so much demand from accountancy bodies, from the investment community, from governments, regulators and civil society. So those students who came to me to talk about sustainability, who wrote dissertations about sustainability, they found themselves almost at the cutting edge of some of the latest developments and it really enabled them to change their companies, to work with CEOs, boards of directors, their supply chains. And to me, it certainly reflects the, the big impact that uh, our students uh, and, and our colleagues can make by talking about sustainability and, and looking at this. Those companies that have started to engage with the question of climate change have, in the first instance, really been asked to look at themselves. So every company has a certain carbon footprint, as it's known. Companies have already used that as their starting point. They started to reduce their emissions through various ways of changing their electricity system, the electricity that they produce, reducing carbon emissions in the production process. But increasingly, what we're realizing is that the bigger part of many of their company's emissions is in the supply chain. So that's anything to do with from the sourcing of raw materials through the logistics of bringing these parts and materials and components into the, the factories and the operations, then being shipped out and ultimately in the use. So the consumer also plays a huge role. And then even beyond that, at the end of life, what happens to anything that we discard uh, so there's always emissions involved in this wider network. So what we've done in, in our paper is to look at the supply chain effect of carbon emissions and try to get a sense of how do companies actually make sense of that and how do they engage with organizations in the supply chain, both buyers and suppliers. What we've done is really to, to try and sort and organize the different approaches that companies are taking. And so what we found is basically that companies are currently responding through three different types of engagement. The first one is a very basic way of asking the suppliers, what are your carbon emissions? Please give us your data and then we'll file them. So it's a very basic approach. The more engaged companies have actually taken the next step and they, they started to say to their suppliers, well, if you want to continue supplying us with your products and parts and components, you have to ensure that year on year you actually start to reduce your own emissions because they feature as part of our own wider scope three emissions. So that's the more transactional approach, very competitive, very hard-nosed, uh, typically through contract clauses and, and other conditions, really trying to leverage the power that some of the bigger companies have over their suppliers and the supply chain to reduce the emission upstream. But interestingly, I think some of the more enlightened approaches or the advanced approaches, as we would call them, are much more collaborative. So their companies have perhaps realized that sort of hitting their suppliers over the head with these tough conditions isn't necessarily going to be helpful, particularly if these suppliers are relatively small, uh, don't necessarily have the resources in terms of time, in terms of know-how and, and money. So what companies are doing in this type of approach is really work with them through a collaborative approach, inviting them to learn, to share insights, uh, providing them with, with feedback, with, with materials, inviting them to events. So it's a very different style of engaging with the supply chain, which can be both you know, a, a tremendous source of innovation because you suddenly started to talk about what it is you're producing, how you're producing it, where you can cut, cut down waste and emissions. And so the financial benefits really fall on both the supplier and, and the main company. And so that more enlightened approach reflects, I suppose, our understanding that companies are, are not just isolated entities. They really have to take a systemic approach working with the supply chain, but also with their buyers. We're asking what do the customers want? How can they help through their products, their buyers and, and, and customers to reduce their emissions? And ultimately, I think that's the way many other sustainability challenges will, will go insofar that companies have to really look beyond the, their own sort of company border, if you like, company boundaries, and work with partners, sometimes even competitors.